Well, let's get some perspective on this now with Boris Malagurski. He's a Serbian filmmaker. He's made several documentaries on Kosovo. And he joins me live now from Belgrade. Many thanks for being with us here, Mr. Malagurski. Now, what do you think could happen to the Serbs in the north of Kosovo if the crossings fall under full control of these breakaway authorities? Well, I think the Serbs realize that this is a life-or-death situation for them because the Kosovo-Albanian self-proclaimed government of Kosovo uh, has been trying to push the Serbs out of Kosovo ever since they have uh, gained uh, significant uh, power status. And, uh, and it's, uh, it's very interesting that uh, this is happening right now uh, at a time when uh, it seems that the international community is against any such moves. Of course, the UN Security Council has denied support for these actions and uh, and the Serbs are, are trying to use this to their advantage and this is why they're setting up roadblocks and trying to prevent uh, uh, these measures to take place but uh, in any case Elex has already uh, uh, arrived at the Yarinje uh, checkpoint and uh, and there is a helicopter that landed at the Brnjak checkpoint so we're, we're waiting to see what will happen next and the Serbs are waiting as well. Now, the international community uh, in the region uh, is uh, there maintaining peace and stability, yet they appear to be ignoring calls to encourage dialogue between both sides, choosing to support solely the Kosovans. Why do you think that that is? Well, you know, it's very naive to think that uh, EULEX and K4 are actually helping the Pristina government. No, EULEX and K4 are just continuing their policies. Uh, uh, under the banner of protecting peace and stability, as you said. Uh, but um, with the establishment of Kosovo customs at these checkpoints, uh, the budget of Kosovo is being filled up, and uh, <clears throat> the finances and economy in Kosovo are controlled by international forces uh, and international powers. So uh, Tachi is, is merely fulfilling his tasks, and it's very naive to think that uh, his mentors will stop him. And um, where do you think this will lead? As a last resort, is it possible that the Serbs might choose to station their own troops on the border? I think uh, the, the current government in Serbia is unwilling to take any uh, measures to protect the Serbs other than to talk to international forces and hope that the international forces will, will protect the Serbs there. Um, we all know that Serbia's main goal is to join the European Union and... Uh, uh, they will not jeopardize that, uh, even if it means giving up on the 100,000 Serbs, uh, 100,000 plus Serbs who live currently in the province of Kosovo. But with such a strong Serb community in northern Kosovo, is there a chance of another breakaway happening on the cards, perhaps? Well, northern Kosovo is already de facto breaking away because they, they have uh, very few uh, points where they meet with, uh, with the Albanian authorities in Pristina. So the Serbs there have parallel institutions and, uh, and they will not accept uh, uh, any independent coastal institutions. They have uh, been fighting up till now uh, to, to resist all that. So uh, de facto it is already breaking away and this is what, what bothers the international community. They want uh, sovereignty of Kosovo on all of its territories. So uh, the Serbs will fight it. I, I I'm, uh, fairly firmly believe that they will fight it at any cost, even if it means fighting till the, till the very end. All right, Bolas Malogorski, many thanks for speaking to us on that situation on the uh, Kosovan-Serbian border. Many thanks.